Welcome back to Garden Talk, brought to you by the Penn State Erie County Extension Master Gardeners. Again, I'm your co-host, Mike Bailey, along with Ellen DePlacido. And Ellen, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk a little bit about early season pests and diseases. Uh, oh, okay. you know, we've Fine. talked about yeah. putting those seeds in the ground now. Yeah. We're going to talk about what and can putting happen. The, putting those mm-hmm. plants in the ground, yeah. Mm-hmm. What's what's going to happen now? Right, right. right so right. We'll, what do you, where do you want to start this whole process? Well, why don't I just start with making a statement that seeds can rot in the soil if the conditions don't remain good. You know, you tried your yep. best, You're right. thought you picked a good time, but maybe it got cold or mm-hmm. it got too wet, and then those seeds are going to rot. Yeah, and probably. our temperatures have been up and down, haven't they? Yes. So we don't know what we're going to find. Mm-hmm. Um, also, that those seeds can be consumed by a variety of different soil dwelling organisms, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. Yeah, you're right. That's a good way to put it, probably. Insects, worms, nematodes, even larva beetles and other bugs and moths. Um, and we think about those, but you know what else? They can actually be eaten by animals. Oh, yeah. And we all have problems with that. You know, the rabbits and the deer and the woodchuck, they're looking for food. So your best bet is to... Um, if you're able to, is to put a fence up. Mm-hmm. Um, we have problems with voles and chipmunks, so mm-hmm. you might want to try some traps. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, one of the things that we found out for voles, if you use some peanut butter with some oatmeal, Mike told me that, so I'll have to try that. Yeah, my neighbor clued me in on that. Oh, okay. And, and believe it or not, it works really Does well. It? Yes. I figured it did, or you wouldn't have said yeah. it. Yeah. You know, and... We get we get quite a few calls into the hotline about you know what do I do with chipmunks or voles and moles and stuff yeah. like that, and you know in the end okay especially with voles and moles mm-hmm. excuse me voles and chipmunks, chipmunks you know it's it's the it's the mice traps that are going to do the trick yeah. there really yeah. isn't any other good way of doing it yeah. you know and the the voles will you, know, you can you can make those traps with a slice of apple also mm-hmm. but that mm-hmm. peanut butter. You know, an oatmeal, they can't seem to uh, get enough to, of it. Yeah, you're right. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, whatever. So, okay. but one of, the, one of the other things that we want to talk about today is is a thing called cutworms. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, sounds pretty cruel, doesn't it? it okay. Does. Really, it's the, the larva of the cutworm moth. Clever name for the cutworm, isn't it? Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> you know, and this cutworm is a, um, a small grub like creature, which is about an inch long, though, and it's got an. Um, some dark grays and browns into it, into mm-hmm. its coloring, mm-hmm. and it's a it's a nasty looking grub type thing when you actually find one, and I'll show you how tell you how to find that also. But what they do, okay, the larva, which is the cutworm itself, and the pupa of that of that cutworm, okay, actually overwinter in the soil, okay, and uh, and then in the spring it feeds on you know uh, some organic material. But one of the things that it feeds on is the young transplants that you have put in your garden and or the young seedlings that you have started. And what you do is how you'll notice that you might have this is that you get up one day and you get out of the garden and some of your plants are just totally Falling missing. Falling over? To- no, totally missing probably. Oh, they're gone. They're gone. Ooh, okay. Because okay? what mm-hmm. the cutworm will do is wrap itself around it, bite it off at ground level, mm-hmm. and then drag it back down into its hole or consume it right on oh, the surface. Okay. Okay. okay, but the plant is not going to be there. Now, okay. if you experience that, and I have, but not every year. Okay, I mean it's been a few years now since I've seen some cutworms in 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 my garden. So mm-hmm. I'm wondering whether this is the year where I'm going to see them come back. <laughs> but what you do where that plant was, take your fingers or take a little bit of a trowel or something like that, and just kind of dig up the soil for the, you know the top two inches for in a, in a diameter, about six inches around where that plant was, and look carefully, and you might find that cutworm. Okay. Okay, then you'll know that that was your problem. Okay. Now, how do you manage these cutworms? Because they, uh, they can devastate a small garden, mm-hmm. okay, if there's a number of cutworm larvae that are still in the soil. One of the best ways of doing it that I find, that I found out is that, you know, put, put around them what they call a collar, and it's nothing more than, say, a, a, piece of, a piece of cardboard, which is about you know, maybe three inches in diameter. And you, what you do with the cardboard, you go cut in from one side. Okay. okay. And then when you get to the center portion, you cut it kind of in a circle. Okay. So that then you can take that piece of cardboard and 
right and line it up to wiggle that plant in between that in that cut and get it into the centerpiece and let the pieces come back together and then put a little soil around the edges to keep it from from blowing up on and blowing away so on it's you. actually a collar so it's anchored yeah it's actually a collar okay and you can do that with cardboard or you can do that with newspaper and it doesn't have to be really thick cardboard it can be cardboard say from a cereal box okay like, or something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. you know and in the in the newspaper and it seems to work really well also you could you could use the crushed egg shells, you know, or the diatomaceous yeah. earth to kind mm -hmm. of, you the know, seashells, cr yeah, create a, seashells, create a yeah. scratchy type surface, okay, that they don't like to crawl over. But I have found that the, the paper collars work the best. Ellen, it looks like we've used our time for today, so okay. we're gonna we're gonna come back to these this topic of early season pests on our next session also. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now. Mm -hmm. Bye bye.